All right, people. Anybody home? I'm sorry I've kept you all waiting. I had no internet connection, none whatsoever. So I couldn't put a broadcast out. Um, I'm going to take a run at this. I don't have time to mess about now because the, my first trap was in the middle of rural Ayrshire. I didn't go to the depot till late on. So by the time I go to the first trap to do this, uh, this broadcast, I'm afraid I had no internet connection whatsoever. So the first minister is going to use an update in about 30 minutes. So I want to get a move on and get this done okay. So let's go on with the coronavirus update. These are the figures for yesterday, the 12th, the 1st, 2021. Tested in Scotland since the pandemic reached their shores, 1,460,131, and that's plus 6,598 from Monday to Tuesday. Tested positive since the pandemic reached their shores, 153,423, and that's plus 1,875 from Monday to Tuesday. And hospital, we have a... 1,717, and that's plus 53. In the intensive care units, we have 133 COVID patients, and that's plus 7. Vaccinated, the vaccination uh, number, the vaccination number, sorry, now stands at uh, 175,942, and that was plus 12,567 from Monday to Tuesday. Okay, um... Deaths, I'm sorry to report that yesterday there was 54, 54 deaths from COVID-19 and that takes the hospital death total to over 5,000 at 5,023. Um, community and hospital deaths combined equals 6,686. Okay, let's get the news review. I'll bat through this, and that way you people will be able to go on to listen to the First Minister, okay? Right, here we go. News review for Tuesday the 12th of the 1st, 2021. Now, Tuesday starts with all the rags uh, leading on COVID-19. Uh, most go on the vaccination programme, and a couple go on test and protect, right? The rags that, we, um, the rags that, are, uh, that are actually asking the First Minister to speed up, the vaccination program. Um, well, the first ones can only go as fast as the um, as the UK government is distributed to the devolved nations, right? And the rags that went on test and protect here in Scotland were getting their figures for Gordon Brown, and boy did his think tank get it so so wrong, and he's been attacked in the papers for it this morning. Yeah. Um, he was trying to compare apples and pears. It just doesn't work. All right? Doesn't work. So he's taking pelters in the press today for his phony figures that were published in the, I think it was the Telegraph yesterday and in the Metro yesterday. All right? Okay, then. <coughs> Moving on, the Celebrity Magazine yesterday. Um, they were going on football and a wee boy getting a scale for a scale for his bum. All right, believe it or not, that was actually a headline in one of the, the kid on uh, newspapers yesterday, the Daily Record. Wee boy gets scale for his bum. All right. Moving on, Tuesday um, at nine thirty a.m. Martin Keaton's uh, case was in the uh, the court of session. Now it was there for a motion. I never quite got the idea of what the motion was about. To be honest with you, anyway, the motion was dismissed. And the uh, awards were a uh, uh, costs were awarded against Martin Keatons and his legal team. The main case now comes up on the twenty first and the twenty second of January. Worth a watch and see what happens there, folks. All right. Tuesday, the committee looking into the mishandling of uh, the sexual abuse claims against um, Alex Salmond sat and took evidence. The uh, in the hot seat this time was Leslie Evans, um, the UK's top civil servant in Scotland. And it comes to light during the session that those that act, that, that uh, alleged uh, allegedly made complaints against Mr Salmon did not want this to go to court. They didn't want the police involved. That tells you something. That tells you there was no case to answer. But Leslie Evans, the UK's top civil servant in Scotland, she went and got the police involved anyway. 
So the whole Alec, ba uh, Alec Salmon debacle didn't need to come about at all. Not a single one of the women wanted the police involved. None. So this is definitely an attack by the British state on the character of Mr Salmon and an attempt to sabotage the Scottish government. Okay. Um, anyway. Um, during that uh, session yesterday, Mr. Salmon was invited to um, go in person to give evidence to the committee next week. But a letter from his lawyer seems to indicate that he's no gone. Because the courts have not allowed certain evidence to be released. And Mr. Salmon doesn't think it's worth his while going to the um, committee unless that evidence is present. Because without that evidence... Well, there's no much point I'm going to commit at all. Um, because because the courts won't leave that, release that evidence, if Mr Salmon then makes a mistake and mentions that evidence in the committee, Mr Salmon's going to get dragged back into court and banged in a pokey. All right. Tuesday. Micro Microsoft have said the problems with the Teams um, programme that all the schools are using, or most of the schools are using, <coughs> won't be resolved for at least another couple of weeks. So remote learning, maybe have to move on to a different platform. But Microsoft have admitted that the problem that the kids were having getting into Teams for the remote learning was theirs. Apparently they knew about the problem 40 days ago and they've been working on it ever since trying to fix it. But it wasn't fixed for the start of a term. All right. And uh, Tuesday, in the world of business, all the major supermarkets announced that they will turn away customers in Scotland who do not who, who do not wear a mask eh, on entering the store unless they have a valid medical reason not to. Okay. Now, um, eh, also Tuesday, there's spec eh, John Lewis have said that they will cancel Click and Collect. So. If you want to order something for John Lewis's now, it'll be delivered to your door. It's much safer if somebody like me bring it out. Right? We can put on a mask, a pair of gloves, drop it at your doorstep. You can put on a pair of gloves, take it in, and put it in a cupboard somewhere, and leave it for 72 hours before you open it. Alright? So John Lewis's are going to drop quick and collect, and there is every possibility that others will follow suit. And we know that the First Minister today is talking about uh, doing away with quick and collect at takeaways because the concern is people are ordering, showing up at these stores and then queuing outside these stores to get their orders and they're no social distancing, they're no wearing masks and things like that, OK? So it looks like quick and, quick and collect is going to get knocked on the head today by the First Minister. That's right. Tuesday, food supplies to Northern Ireland from the UK is becoming a major issue. The chief executives of Tesco, Asda, Marks and Spencers and the co-op have all written to Cabinet Minister Michael Gove to uh, ask the UK government to have another look at this because what's going on here isn't working for them. Now, as I've explained already, Tesco, Asda, Marks and Sparks and the co-op are all based in central Scotland. That's where their CDCs are. A CDC is a central distribution uh, centre. All right. So all the supermarket CDCs are in the Central Belt in Scotland and they ship via Cairn Ryan into Northern Ireland. <coughs> right. Uh, the supermarket chains, being as big as they are, they are still having problems in going through the paperwork and, of course, the way the supermarket ship things is, like one of these motors I'm on, there will be ambient on it, they'll be frozen on it and they'll be fresh on it on the one motor and all these products need different certifications um, for example we were talking the other day about uh, meat products and something called groupage where I'd go to one meat plant, pick X amount up go to the next meat plant, pick X amount up next meat plant uh, picks X amount up and then deliver it on route problem is with the way they pack the meat right, you could get Three or four beef products in one pallet, they all need different certification. You get three or four lamb or pork products on the one pallet, they all need different certifications. And then when it comes to um, processed foods, they all need different certification, uh, certification again. 
So the supermarket chains are bloody well struggling with the paperwork, never mind uh, the haulage companies that said they're no longer going to deliver into Northern Ireland. Okay, so there is a, a distinct danger of real food shortages in Northern Ireland, but the UK government will do nothing. They will blame the EU and re they will weave it for the EU in, Northern, in Southern Ireland to sort the mess out. Simple as that. So, uh, my friends in Northern Ireland, I'm afraid you're not going to be able to stock up. And panic buying is the question because there's nothing on your bloody shelves. Right. Moving on, Tuesday. A stushy erupts down that road at uh, the House of Carpet Baggers and Thieves over school meals, right, for children. Now, the parents down there are supposed to get a 30 pound food voucher per child per fortnight to cover school meals while uh, they're in lockdown or on holiday. But what they've done is the government, Westminster government, being who they are, they have outsourced it to one of their pals to provide ration boxes, get this, ration boxes, to parents for their children. Anyway, social media erupts with pictures of what is in these boxes. Top chefs have had a look at what was in these boxes and went, we can't make nothing with that. And the fresh foods won't last a fortnight. In the boxes were three apples, two bananas, a wee bit of cheese, one loaf of bread, a carrot, an onion, a tomato, a tin of beans, two chocolate bars, tiny wee chocolate bars out of a little multi-pack. And that was what was being delivered uh, to feed a child school lunches for a fortnight. Anyway, as I say, top chefs had a look at it and went, we couldn't have cooked nothing out of that. And, I mean, you take a loaf of bread stale after three days. So they deliver them a loaf of bread to do a fortnight for a kid. It goes stale after three days. Unbelievable. But that's where we are doing that road. Ration packs are back. And what's in them is bloody well unedible. So what's going on down that road is criminal. The Tories know what they're doing. They're outsourcing and their pals are skimming off half the tap and then gain them a bloody backhander. That's what's happening here. Okay. So there's all sorts of crap hitting the fan down there. But meanwhile, children are going hungry while pe pe parents are looking at these ration boxes and going, what the hell am I supposed to do with that? Unbelievable. Tuesday, the New Zealand uh, Morning Herald announces uh, the test results of the um, New Zealand and Australian uh, trials on the AstraZeneca vaccine. Okay. Now, what the Australian uh, uh, immunologists and the New Zealand immu immunologists are saying is that after you've received your a full dose of the, the AstraZeneca vaccine, you will only have 62% effective immunity. That's not enough um, for herd immunity. You've got to be up at the 80-90% uh, to get herd immunity, right? So what the Australians and the New Zealanders are saying is that the Astra AstraZeneca um, vaccine is of no use whatsoever, and they are recommending that it is not rolled out to uh, the rest of the world. So there you have it, folks. The the so-called UK super um, vaccine, which was made by Frenchmen, um, that is not effective. It's just not effective at all. So I am back in the truck, Stefan. That's why I've had some problems today. As I say, I was out in rural Ayrshire when I pulled in at 11 o'clock and uh, I had no internet connection whatsoever, so I couldn't broadcast at 11 o'clock. So it seems that we Scribbles was right today. I was going to be late. All right. So uh, New Zealand and Australia are recommending to the World Health Organization that the AstraZeneca vaccine is not rolled out because it is not effective and it won't uh, get any nation to herd immunity, which is the goal of vaccine, to get to herd immunity. All right. Tuesday. Bloomberg uh, um, declared Brexit a failure after only 12 days. According to Bloomberg, UK traders are uh, going out of business at a rapid rate of knots and UK traders can no longer trade into Europe unless they um, open 
uh, VAT uh, offices or, or, or they get VAT registered in each country they deliver into. Um, they can make it merry, concentrated kind of dory. Well, you know, I'm only telling you what the Australian studies say. The Australian studies say when you have the recommended vaccine, uh, it's two doses, it's only 62% effective, Dory. All right. Anyway, Bloomberg's is saying that a uh, UK business is done. It's knackered. The Conservative Party have successfully killed a uh, international trading in the UK. So, um, and as I say, the reason is because of the change of the tax laws um, eight days before Christmas. So it was that the 16th of December, they rushed that bill through, changed the VAT laws, and basically what they've done is they've actually shut business in the UK, and especially in Scotland, which is a, an export nation, they have shut us off to the rest of the world, basically. It's almost as if they don't want us trading with the rest of the world, and they only want UK businesses trading within the newly created internal market. Obviously, the newly created internal market isn't big enough to cater for the business needs of these businesses in the UK. And as I was saying yesterday, the Federation of Small Businesses reckon 250,000 small businesses will fold um, this year. God knows how many folded last year, but what we do know is that 800,000 people have lost their jobs so far. So anyway, Bloomberg's is reporting that uh, um, exporters in the UK are finished, they're done. Um, it's just too costly to try and export into the, the EU now. And if you want to export into the EU, EU you've got to get VAT, VAT registered in each of the nations you want to trade into. They're just not going to do it. It's expensive, a lot of paperwork, and nobody's going to bother. And the same goes for EU sending stuff the other way. So what the Tory party have all, uh, have um, actually done is shut the UK out of the rest of the world. And uh, basically we're stuck here in Plague Island with a bunch of loonies. And I mean Plague Island with a bunch of loonies. Also, uh, um, Tuesday, apparently Croatians are blaming a, a Scots virus for their peak and the virus in their country. Um, there's a wee bit of spat going on between a professor at Edinburgh University and a professor in Croatia. And uh, apparently Scotland has got a strain of the virus which is sweeping its way through Croatia. Croatia. As we already know, there is only um, a... Scotland only ever had the original strain which we flattened in the summer and then we then imported it when we opened up hotels and we opened up hospitality. So we'd already done away with it, but it we opened up again and let it all back in. Thanks to David Hines for uh, pointing that out to me. So uh, we need to make it clear to people. Um, as far as I know, there's only there's a few strains of this virus, but the Kent virus, South African virus, and the original ones are the ones I'm aware of. And as far as I'm aware, there's been no virus identified as the Scottish strain. So what Croatia is playing at, I don't know, but who cares? It's Croatia. Right, Tuesday, the Resolution Foundation revealed a, um, a sorry story. They released another report on poverty and the pandemic. It would appear that the wealthiest have got wealthier during this period and the poorest have got poorer. And the Resolution Foundation says it's because the poorer at home more, it's costing them more to heat, eat, um, light, and uh, it's costing me for homeschooling and things like internet and things like that. Okay, whereas the rich, or the richest, they are saving on the commute into the office, and they're saving on their two or three family homes a year, so they're being able to stash away six or seven grand a year on top of um, getting eighty percent of their wages on furlough. Uh, but a lot of them are actually on full wages because they're quite capable of working from home. So. The Resolution Foundation have made it clear that during this pandemic, the poor have got poorer. Cost of living for the poor has risen by about 8.6%, and cost of living for the richest has went down about 3.6%. 3, 3 so there you go, folks. Right, moving on to this morning, and what the papers have to say. Right, the Scotsman goes on, NHS facing um, its biggest crisis. Well, apparently it is. All right. The record goes on, Queen's cousin is violent sex beast. Right, the Earl of Strathmore admits guilt um, over a sexual attack that took place on a guest 
and a bedroom at Glen's at Glam's Castle. Anyway, the the Ellis Rathmore has a pled guilty to it. The sun goes on, Queen's cousin and Castle sex attack. Same story. Right, the telegraph goes on, Sturgeon. Competition with England can speed up roll uh, roll out. They're talking about the roll out of the vaccine. They want Scotland and England to get into a competition to see who could roll out quickest. Well, that ain't going to work, is it? Because England's in charge of central distribution, and if they want to win the race, they just slow down the distribution to Scotland. So, you know, um, I still think that getting into central procurement with, with England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, and this one was a mistake. Obviously, it's cheaper to buy in bulk. All right? Because now we have Public Health England running the roll out of the vaccine. And as we've seen through this pandemic, Public Health England are a bloody disaster. Disaster. Right, the Herald goes on. You turn after COVID-infected care homes. Uh, uh, right, and this is a story that uh, apparently NHS Lothian had been refusing to vaccinate uh, care homes that already had COVID, COVID in it. Can't believe it. Mental. Absolutely mental. Right, um, the eye goes on. Lockdown extension warning, but well, apparently there's going to be a, a, a mere extended lockdown, but uh, the First Minister said that yesterday. The National goes on. Brown under fire um, on false Scottish virus test stats. That's what I was talking about earlier in the report. Gordon Brown and his a think tank had more or less made the bloody stats up. They'd misread the, uh, the data altogether. And, of course, they've been trying to compare Apple with pears. Right, and then the star. Well, you know, the good old star. Always good for a laugh. The star goes on. <laughs> the star goes on a hard Brexit. Okay. And what that is, what the star's on about is apparently Viagra sales have went up 40% <laughs> when they run up to Brexit. Um, a, as Brit gets a... a as the British get EU bullies. So, obviously, people have been buying Vi Viagra. It must be made somewhere in the EU, so they've been stockpiling it so they don't, in case they run short of Viagra. Um, of course, it is used for other medical purposes. Um, I just can't remember what they are off the top of my head. Right, folks, I apologise for being so late today. As I say, I had technical problems, and, of course, I got a late start, didn't they help? So, I'm going to I'm gonna have to cut and run here, folks. All right? I hope you enjoyed the broadcast. I hope you found it entertainment and uh, entertaining and informative. So, me. Hey. Right, I'm out of here. So I do apologise uh, for the delay, and uh, I'll speak to you all tomorrow. I'm not quite sure what time it'll be tomorrow. I'm back in the truck tomorrow. All right, have a nice day.